Hello, Pathfinders and older teens. Teacher Colleen here, and this is our second story from the book Grace and Gray Camp Legend. I think uh, when we stopped last week, it kind of left us in a mystery. So if you didn't see the video, go back and watch it and listen to the story, because we're starting with chapter two today, Sunday evening. <clears throat> Down, set, hut. Bodies flew at each other from both sides and collided in a tangle of hands, arms, and torsos before angling off in different directions. Brandon took three strides backward, eyes focused on the field, hands clasped around the football. I'm open, I'm open, I'm open, I'm open, Brandon! Don't all go along, Brandon shouted. The boys waved their arms frantically, their defenders within arm's reach. Four apple, five apple. Two boys ran at Brandon, but the Alderman twins were ready. As linesmen, they pushed back and the rushers pushed back the rushers to give Brandon more time to throw. Brandon scrambled to the side, the rushers close at his heel. No kids were open. They all stood in the end zone, wanting to catch the go-ahead touchdown. But Brandon coiled his arm and in desperation, chucked the ball high into the air, just before the rushers tagged him with two hands. The ball spiraled through the warm air and peeked at the lowering sun. In the crowded end zone, legs tangled and boys collapsed in a small heap. But one boy remained standing, hands raised. Sammy stood in the ball's crosshairs. He opened his arms wide, his good eye focused intently on the rapidly approaching ball, his mouth agape in anticipation. The brown spiral slammed into Sammy's face at high velocity. His arms clamped together after the fact and his legs gave way. His body crumpled to the turf and the ball bounced next to him, settling by his side. A collective, oh, rose up from the boys. Brandon sighed deeply as the twins broke into laughter in front of him. I just broke a kid's face, great. CJ ran to Sammy's side and examined his face. Wow, you took it pretty hard, but you look fine. I almost caught it. Yep, nice tur. Wait, your eye is a little, uh, uh, the ball didn't do that. My mom dropped me out of a thun roof. Oh. Brandon ran up as CJ lifted Sammy to his feet. His entire forehead and nose were red, but his smile cleared him to keep on playing. Well, we have two minutes before it's time to head in, CJ stated glancing at his watch. That was fourth down, so what do you say about giving Purple one play to win? The Purple boys erupted into, yeah, one play. Yeah, sure, Brandon agreed. We'll stop y'all cold, you know. Let's go gold. Purple began to huddle around CJ and gold gathered around Brandon. We'll stop him, Austin said plainly. That's right, we will. And we've been down one man all game. I'm proud of you guys. Patrick sat on the sidelines where he'd been all game, digging in the grass. Patrick, we need you. Come on. I hate football. The team needs you, stupid team. Brandon shook his head and looked at the boys in his huddle. All right, we'll only rush one. Grayson? Yeah. Do whatever you can to get in there and get CJ. The rest of you stay on your man. No touchdown. Gold on three. One, two, gold! The boys spread out along the line of scrimmage just as Purple lined up. Two of Purple's more mature, muscular boys stood in front of CJ and glared at the lean Grayson. One scoffed. You're not going to cry when we knock you down, are you? Grayson merely reached to his hat, spun it on his scalp, and fit it facing backward. Oh, snap. Now he's serious, Tucker. 
Ha ha, he sure does look serious, Trevor. Grayson took a deep breath. He was in good shape and always had been. He had never lifted weights or even been on an organized sporting team, but he couldn't remember the last day he hadn't broke a sweat running, riding his bike, creek hiking, mowing the yard, or trying one of his dad's creative dares. One day, his dad had dared him to run to the adjacent town and back in an hour, a distance about four miles. As he got older, the time got shorter and he would throw in some obstacles. Once he ran with a backpack full of sweet corn, and another time he had to do a push-up every time a car passed him on the road. Luckily, he lived in small town Iowa, but he counted 132 during one trip. The challenges never amounted to much of a tangible reward. You know, an ice cream cone, maybe, small binoculars, first dibs on the Friday movie choice. But Grayson would have done them anyway, without any reward at all, because his dad was always there to congratulate him in the end. Down. Set. Ha! Grayson darted left and took Tucker's hands to his chest. The force pushed him further left and he spun with the momentum. In a moment, he was past, but CJ had felt the pressure and rolled right. Both blockers stood between him and the quarterback once again. Grayson didn't hesitate, but flew straight at the blockers. He knew they would be cherishing this moment. A straight-on collision would certainly send him to the ground, probably broken, possibly even dead. He feigned a leap directly between them. They both hit hard. <laughs> Trevor extended both hands in a hard push, but found only air as Grayson stopped on a dime. Tucker missed as well and stumbled forward into Trevor's thick legs. As Tucker fell, Grayson jumped and kicked off Tucker's back, giving him the momentum he needed. The counselor struggled to find an open receiver, but it was too late. Grayson stretched out his arms. But CJ had never been sacked. With a stick farm, CJ shoved his palm hard into the side of the boy's cheek, sending him reeling to the grass. With his pursuer out of sight to the left, CJ scanned the field and finally found an open receiver streaking toward the back right corner of the end zone. He cocked his arm and two hands pushed into his side. The ball left his hand, but the play had ended. Sacked. Game over, Brandon yelled, running to his victorious players. Stunned, CJ stared at Grayson, who stood two feet lower. Grayson casually wiped the dirt from his shoulder and ignored the sore cheek that had turned as red as his hat. He cheated! He spiked me in the back, Trevor yelled. Huh, I'm not wearing spikes. CJ shook his head and slapped his thigh in anger. Can't you two even block one kid? Jeez! Brandon stopped in his tracks and watched the fuming CJ from the corner of his eyes. Morris All Sports Camp emphasized good sportsmanship over athletic prowess and winning. Or at least it was supposed to. Careful to avoid eye contact with CJ, Brandon blew his whistle and addressed a group. Good game, purple and gold. It's a solid tie. Let's line up, shake hands, and get to the rep for our next activity. The boys did as they were told, making two single file lines across from each other and shaking the hands of the other team as they filed past. Grayson held out his hand for Tucker and Trevor, but at the last moment, both withdrew their hands and smoothed the sides of their sweaty hair with joy. Grayson seized with anger, his cheeks burning even hotter, but he restrained himself. His mother's familiar words rang in his ears. Do to others what you would want them to do to you. Punching them in the face would probably not be the best way to follow that command. And Grayson took a deep breath. He shook the last purple's hand and jogged to the sideline with his team. He reached for his water bottle, but Liam jumped to it before he could and handed it to him. N -n nice stick. N -n nice stack. Oh, thanks, Liam. It was fun. Taking his water bottle, he caught a hateful glare from Tucker and Trevor, who walked stride and stride with CJ. 
Gold on me, Brandon shouted with his hand up. We'll stick together everywhere we go. So don't wander off, Patrick. Come on, let's go. Grayson glanced back as Patrick abandoned the grass pile he'd made on the sideline and sauntered to the rest of the group as they merged into other groups flowing toward the rec center. From all angles, some had played cricket, lacrosse, or water polo. Others had tried a wide range of sports, from the regulars like basketball and baseball to sports unique to Morris College like Powerball and Speedway. As Grayson surveyed the other kids, he noticed a group of girls beginning to merge in front of them, chatting intensely. Jared, who was near the front of their group, turned the wide eyes and sly grin spread across his lips and with his grin plastered on, he stepped abruptly to the side of the group and back in again, right next to Grayson and Liam. Grayson recoiled, but Jared had already leaned toward his ear. Dare me to make a move on one of those. Ha <laughs> ha! Grayson glanced at the goofy, mischievous boy from the corner of his eyes. He still felt sour from the football game. But the word dare and the boy's hint of mischief fed his curiosity. You want me to dare you? Liam, who was right by Grayson's side, giggled. But Jared cocked his head, the grin still as wide as ever. Yeah, yeah, duh! Grayson cracked a smile and scanned the group of girls for the candidate most out of Jared's league. Oh, that's so many options. Blonde, brunette, redhead, athletic, tall, trim, bright smile. Hmm. And then he found her. A girl who could make any boy who hadn't yet started liking girls start instantly. Wow. All right. Ask the one with the blue shirt and ponytail. I dare you. Oh, yeah, Liam whispered. Jared searched the 12 girls as they entered the massive three gymnasium size rec. His head swung to Grayson. Nice choice, my friend. Very nice. Now watch the magic. Grayson watched for a moment as Jared scurried past Brandon to the girls group. But realizing he didn't want to miss the action, he hurried after Liam only a step behind. He caught Jared just as he swung in the neck, in next to the blue shirted girl and pumped his chin at her. Hey, baby. The girl in blue jolted in surprise, her arm reflectively curled in between her and the bold boy. Do I know you? Grayson and Liam nearly laughed, but kept their distance. Jared wasn't deterred. Uh, most people do, some more intimately than others. The girl's brow furrowed. What does that mean? Jared smiled. I don't know, but I know I would like to get to know you. Do you want to know me? The girl in blue looked over at her friends who giggled some kind of response Jared didn't understand. One girl leaned over to her and whispered into her ear. The girl in blue gasped, but laughed softly afterward. She seemed about to respond when one of her friends leaned around her and provided a response. She's not interested in chipmunks. Jared's grin disappeared. His larger than average two front teeth slipped behind his lips. His high rounded cheeks blushed bright and his feet stopped moving. The girls, except for the one in blue, broke into uncontrollable giggles and they all moved past him like a herd of laughing hyenas. Grayson moved to console his new friend, but Jared's twin brother was there in a flash, worry spread on his face. Jared, what happened? Oh, nothing, he lied, glancing toward Grayson and Liam as they kept pace in the gym. She just didn't look nearly as good up close. Oh, yeah? They looked like they were laughing pretty hard, Grayson pointed out with a grimace. They did, he asked nervously. Yeah, you tell a joke or something, he asked, giving the boy an out. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot. I did. I did. The boy stared at him as Brandon continued to lead them through the giant gym area. And the joke was, Nick asked. Oh, uh, Jared dug deep for a joke. Any joke. 
It, it was about a chipmunk. A chipmunk and... Did they say you looked like a chipmunk, Jared? Nick put his hand on Jared's shoulder. No, of course not. Why would they say that? I don't look anything like a chipmunk. Do I? Nick whispered into Liam's ears. Girls call him Chip at school. <laughs> Liam tried to hold in his laughter and snorted. Grayson patted him on the back and looked toward the blushing Jared. If you look like a chipmunk, you're the thinnest chipmunk I've ever seen. Everyone looks like some animal in some way anyway, but better be a cute little chipmunk than a boar or a rat or, or a deer, Jared inserted. A deer? Yeah, that's what she looks like. Grayson and the others glanced left as the cowgirls' gold gathered on the gym floor next to their counselor. They started giggling again, but the girl in the blue suddenly flinched and froze. Her eyes seemed to be directed straight at Grayson, or perhaps right behind him. But either way, he felt the uncomfortable attention and quickly examined his laces to make sure they were still tied. Jared laughed. Did you see her stop dead when she saw me? Yeah, a deer in the headlights for sure. Wow. Right, Grayson? Grayson looked at his shoes and then to Jared. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, definitely a deer. The best looking deer I've ever seen, he thought. Brandon finally came to the end of the gym and found a small piece of paper labeled Cowboy's Gold taped to the wall. All right, boys, have a seat here in a circle. The nine boys on, sat on the hardwood floor as Brandon took a binder from his backpack and turned to the first page. Great job on our first activity, boys. Really, that was tons of fun. The boys shook their heads, licking their emotional wounds from the tie. Brandon ignored their dejection and moved on. We'll have a competition like that every morning and then three during the Olympics. Each victory is worth three points to the victor. But even more important is what we call fair play points. Basically, each team is eligible to receive five points based on sportsmanship. If you're good at math, you'd already realize that it is possible to win a game, but lose overall. A boy jammed his hand into the air. Brandon! Brandon! Yes, Ryan? Uh, uh, so, so how many points did we get today? That's a good question. Both gold and purple will get three points for the tie, and CJ and I will award fair play points later. But I can tell you now that we can easily do better. If the whole team plays to their best ability and is respectful to the other team and the officials, then they will receive all five. I think we earned about three points today. No way! Then they should get zero, Ryan complained. Did you see how CJ got angry at his own team? And Trevor said we cheated, another boy from their group had complained. But he was only mad because Grayson schooled his. All right, all right, I know. But is that an excuse for us to be bad sports? The boys grew silent and settled down as Brandon turned back to the binder. Going on, all you have a schedule in your rooms. But just in case you're confused, you all have one major and two minor sports. You will spend three hours in your major instruction in the morning and an hour and a half in each of your minors in the afternoon. When you're done with majors, we will all have lunch together. Then after minors, you're free, you have free time and your competition versus the purples and then supper. Finally, we have evening activity, which is different each night. Who of you has been here before? Two boys raised their hands. What is on Wednesday evening? The dance! <laughs> Brandon smiled. That's right. There's a DJ and some sweet music. And women, Jared blurted. Right, Brandon scoffed. And the pool is open if you don't wish to dance. Half the boys looked relieved and half rolled their eyes. Grayson examined his shoes. Do you know what the paddle is, Grayson? Grayson looked for the answer in his huddle mate's eyes, but found none. Huh? Well, that's okay. You'll get very familiar with it, just like we are rewarded for our athleticism, like you showed today, Grayson. We also award for great character. 
The paddle is a 16 inch wooden paddle and you can receive a total of six awards, two each year. When you receive one, it is branded onto your paddle. Each letter of P-A-D-D-L-E stands for an award. P for perseverance, A for attitude, D for dedication, D for discipline, L for love, and E for enthusiasm. As you train in your sports this week, I hope you also train yourself to show these traits even more. What if you're like Patrick and never compete, Ryan asked before Brandon could go on. Please don't single anyone out like that. We're a team, and I bet Patrick will join us for the next competition. Patrick sat holding his knees close to his body, rocking back and forth. Would he get perseverance for continually not playing, Ryan splurted. No, it doesn't work that way. Would he get love for his love of hatred, Sammy chimed. Or uh, attitude, because he has a pretty awesome bad one, Ryan splurted again. Stop! Wow, okay. I will call on you to talk. Otherwise, let's go on. He looked over his shoulder at the wall. This place is where we are, that we are now, is called our shield. It's called our shield because we're going to make a paper shield and tape it to the wall. We will meet here after all of our events and meals. Brandon reached into his bag and took out a large paper cutout of a shield and placed it on the gym floor. Next to it, he rolled out five or six markers. First, we need to write Cowboys Gold in big letters. Who has good handwriting? Liam jumped in and grabbed the gold marker. In a moment, the shield was labeled boldly with the team name. Okay, good. Now, let's put down some words or phrases that best define our team. What do you want people to think of when they hear Cowboys Gold? Hot! No, Jared, no. Jared smiled. They'll think it anyway. He stared from the corner of his eyes to the cowboy, cowgirl's gold huddle just 15 feet away. Sure, Chip, one of the boys muttered, and the boys laughed into their breath, all of them except Jared and Nick. Come on, anyone else? Brandon burst in. Okay, go red, Sammy yelled. Brandon turned to him, confused. You mean gold? No, I like red better. Or red and white. What? Why? I know, Jared yelled as he raised his hand, because red and white make pink, and pink is hot. <laughs> no, Sammy stated, because red and white are the colors of dead unicorn. Brandon raised both hands in the air. Whoa! What? Why? No one wants to be like a dead unicorn. I wish I had, was a dead unicorn. Patrick hadn't moved his legs, hugged tight at his head, hanging low. Okay, besides Patrick, he grimaced, we don't want to be any color but gold and no mascot but the Cowboys. Do I dare ask for any other suggestions? The group descended into thought. The others spread around the gym were all working on their own shields, discussing wildly and coloring liberally. How about daring? Grayson had nearly whispered. The boys leaned in expecting more. Brandon cocked his head. What do you mean, daring? Grayson shifted, immediately regretting bringing the attention to himself. Well, I, um, you know, Jared likes dares too, and I also like them, so it, it shows you're not afraid. Hmm, I like it. It means we take risks, holding nothing back, but caring what others think about us or how we might get hurt or embarrassed. Yeah. Sweet, bro, Jared said, Jared said with a grin. Shoot, Brandon breathed, looking at his watch. We're running low on time. Daring is great. We'll put that on and tape this up. Come on, boys. Then we're going to go to supper. Austin smiled and muttered to himself, huh, daring will fit perfectly. Chapter three, the cowboy's gold merged into the long string of groups headed to the cafeteria. Boys and girls chanted in enthusiastic unison for their own color. P-U-P-U-R, P-U-R, P-L-E, purple power. 
or G O G O L G O O L D E N Golden Glory. The shouting match lasted the entire long flight of stairs into the cafeteria, where counselors once again counted their kids before ushering them to wash their hands. Hats, I need your hats. No hats in the calf, Brandon yelled as he grabbed cap ball caps from several kids. Grayson froze. Brandon's hand outstretched toward him. I'll take your hat for you, just till we get back out. Grayson stepped back. Why? I want to keep it. It's an old school sign of respect and manners. Camp rule, bud. The group gathered, antsy and ready to eat. Let's go eat. I'm going to starve to death, Ryan complained, holding his stomach. Brandon waved Ryan off. Grayson, take it off. Grayson chewed on his lower lip, breathing through clenched teeth. He couldn't take his hat off. Something could happen to it. Grayson, you'll have to stay outside if you can't take it off. What's wrong? You need to see the nurse about your head or something? I'm going to die of hunger, Ryan bellowed as the last group passed them into the cafeteria. Panic filled Grayson's lungs. His eyes searched the area for an absent solution. I can't take it off. I always have it on. Brandon cocked his head bewildered and leaned down to his level. Come on, you can take it off. You take it off when you go to bed. No, I don't. Oh, he looked to the side thinking. When you go to school or church? No, my teachers and pastor let me. Oh, Brandon stiffened, his strategy failing. So you wear it in the shower? Grayson shifted and looked deep into Brandon's eyes, wanting to say no, but he couldn't lie. He usually hung it on the shower handles. Brandon's lips curled up. Good, so you know that you can take it off and it's still okay. The hat might actually need a break every once in a while, you know. The boy looked into his shoes. Hmm, I guess. My insides are cramping! Shut up, Ryan! Brandon snapped. He turned one last time to Grayson. Look, you can keep it in your hand the whole time, okay? Now let's go, or Ryan will kill us all and then eat us. Grayson whipped his hat off in frustration, ran inside and waved the boys in. No running! The long wait through the line was torture for Ryan and everyone who had to listen to him, but it was even more torturous for Grayson. Every few minutes, he fought off the panic, feeling the absence of his red hat and only clutching the cloth harder in his grasp, relieved, relived the fear. Eventually, he took a tray and brought it around the various lines, choosing his favorite fruit, bread, vegetable, dessert, and a healthy helping of meat. Can I have another hamburger, sir? He asked a square-jawed, muscular man behind the sneeze guard. The man looked very out of place, especially with the transparent hairnet crumpled over his shaved head. The man looked up at him and sneered in disdain. Nice hat hair, kid. Grayson drew back. Nice job, Baldy. He spun on his heel and left, a smirk on his face. A moment later, his smirk left him. Why did he just say that? Where did it come from? That was something his parents would have not been proud of. He had to apologize. He quickly spun around and smack. Grayson's tray flipped into the air with the impact. Salad, brownie, burger, all careened up as his back banked the tiled floor. The tray and the silverware crashed first with a spectacular noise and hundreds of heads turned. The food hit second, splattering cold mustard and dressing over his clothes and face. Then, like an exclamation mark at the end of an already curled remark, his brownie fell with a dull thud right onto his pants. A collective, oh rose in a crescendo of hysterical laughter throughout the cafeteria. Girls and boys joined in the fun. Grayson lay on his back in the middle of the mess, still frozen in surprise as Tucker hovered above with a burger in his hand. Uh, dude, I'm sorry. You really shouldn't just stop like that. An evil grin gleamed through his false apology as he stepped over the tray and strutted toward his table, 
taking a sloppy bite out of his burger. Grayson burned with anger. He let out a deep growl and scrambled to find traction in the mustard and dressing. But the mess only grew messier and the laughter even more hysterical. His cheeks squeezed close to his eyes and a lump rose in his throat. Here, grab my hand. Grayson found the voice to his right and looked up at its source through blurry eyes. He gasped. Grab it. It's her. Her shirt matched her eyes perfectly, ocean blue, and her voice matched her face, confident yet sweet. He hesitated only a moment before grabbing her wrist. She gave him a hard yank and his feet found traction. She pulled him to her with both hands, nodded once only, inches from his face, and hurried away, her ponytail swinging with her bold walk. Thanks, he muttered pathetically at her disappearing figure. All at once, counselors were all around him, asking him how he was and cleaning up his mess with urgency. Brandon was where, but Grayson ignored him. Something was missing, something important. His hands grasped hard air. My hat, where's my hat? What? Brandon asked, looking at the boy's panicked face. You lost it? It was in my hand. He scanned the floor. Tray, lettuce, bun, bowl, silverware, no hat. He scanned back into the line, then out into the seating area. Nothing. It's okay. We'll find it. Come on, let's get you cleaned off. No! Grayson swatted his counselor's arms away and burst into the seating area. He marched forward, his jaw set, fists and teeth clenched. Determined, he ignored the stares. He ignored all the pointing. He ignored all the laughing. He zoomed past Liam, Jared, and his table, the dressing dripping down his shorts onto the carpet. Finding his mark, he grabbed the sitting boy's collar and pulled him backward. The chair teetered precariously on its back legs, and the boy squirmed. Grayson looked hard into Tucker's face. Where is it? Give it to me. What? My hat! You took it! Let go of me, you freak! Grayson snarled and drew back his hand. He had only hit two people before in self-defense, and both had drawn blood. This would be no different. He aimed for the nose and... Don't! Liam grabbed his arm from behind. It, 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 it. Liam pointed to the corner of the cafeteria where a conveyor belt carried dirty trays behind the wall to be cleaned. On one of the trays, being carried away, his red hat lay on a plate of half-eaten mashed potatoes. Grayson squirmed free of Liam and burst away from the two counselors rushing toward him. By now, every eye was on him, mouths agape in rapt attention. He sprinted around a table, ducked a boy with a tray, dodged a flailing female counselor. He watched her tumble on the carpet behind him, and one thought flashed in his mind as a hundred gas sucked the air from the tense room. What am I doing? But the hat drew closer to the hole in the wall. Grayson, stop! He ignored the plea and drew in a quick breath. Two counselors stood on each side of a long table filled with campers who sat with eyes fixated on him. Some still with food sitting unchewed in their mouths. The conveyor belt was just beyond their table. I've already gone this far. Hmm. Taking a quick step for momentum, he dug into the carpet with his toes and dashed toward the table. The female counselor mouthed, no, but it was too late. Leaping with all his strength, his left foot barely made the front edge of the table and propelled him up, shaking the silverware, the cups, all the plastic and the metal, and keeping the momentum, he pounded across the top of the table spraying jello and milk from his shoes as the girls flung back their hands and screamed. The counselors reached for his legs from the sides, but Grayson broke through them like twigs. With one last stride, he pushed off with his right leg and flew toward the conveyor belt as the hat entered the tunnel. He landed and reached. His mind screamed. He had missed it by one second, but there was no time to scream. The counselors converged on him from all sides. He looked desperately into the hole. Hmm, it's big enough. He flew face first into the hole as the counselors grasped at air. 
Sounds of shock and awe filled the cafeteria as the boy disappeared into the hole. The counselors remained frozen in disbelief for only a moment before snapping into search mode. Grayson squirmed in the cramp tunnel, shifting on top of trays, plates, and a sharp fork. He recoiled and a bowl tipped over, liquid soaking through his boxers, and he cringed. He could smell the tomato soup, and he figured he'd smell it until his very next shower. Mm. Ignoring the discomfort, he peered past dishes to his prize, the red hat moving toward the light. He couldn't sit up. He could barely lift his neck, but open space was approaching. The hat entered the light in his body soon after. When the harsh light hit his pupils, he rolled off the belt to his feet and surveyed the surroundings. Large carts filled with trays of yellow, in the yellow tiled room where there were sounds of high pressure water and splashing came from behind a row of carts to his right. He took two quick strides forward and snatched the hat as the tray turned the corner to another hole leading back to the cafeteria. With a relieved sigh, Grayson pulled the hat onto his naked head. Get in here, a loud voice, a loud whispered voice erupted from behind the wall of carts. Grayson's heart skipped and his body tensed. The anger behind the voice was frightening, but it wasn't directed at him. The spring water stopped and a door closed. Do not interact with them. But I was... A resounding slap echoed in the tiled room. An awkward, silent pause followed and Grayson became deathly aware of the sound of his breathing. Mustering his courage, he breathed slowly, taking soft, small steps toward the nearest cart. He could see just enough of the figures through the rack trays to justify the risk. Stalking closer and closer, Grayson could make out two men. One, he recognized as a tall and muscular cafeteria worker with a square jaw. The other was shorter, had bulging eyes, and were freakishly near the sides of his head, like the eyes of an insect he had once found in his backyard, you know, like a praying mantis. Squaw, square jaw and mantis, he thought. Do you need to be reminded of what's at stake, mantis asked, poking his finger at the larger man's chest. No, sir. Do it again, and you're done. Yes, sir. We are too close for your stupidity to ruin everything. Stay here and shut up. The door opened, and Grayson reacted with a jerk, finding shelter just as it clicked shut. Squarejaw shuffled around the carts to the conveyor belt where he had snatched a tray, and he threw it on a cart. Dumb boy, he muttered under his breath. I'm not bald. It's shaved. There's a difference. Grayson grinned and shifted in his tight hiding place. He shifted too much. Squeak! Square Jaw's eyes snapped to the carts. Who's there? He released the tray in his thick hands and slowly stepped toward Grayson's hiding place, his eyes beady and focused. Grayson gulped. The angry man had, a snotty bo had the snotty boy who called him bald alone in a back room. He's going to kill me. Grayson watched through a half-empty glass of milk and trembled as the monster of a man drew closer. Hello, a girl's voice reverberated from the tunnel. Are you in there? The man stopped just short of him, turned and ran to the tray hole. Shut up! No yelling in the hole, you little brat! Seizing the moment, Grayson dashed toward the hole only slipping in a glop of dressing before making the mad crawl over the clattering trays, cups, and silverware. Fear and adrenaline rushing through his veins, he burst through the hole into the waiting arms of two angry counselors. They yelled something at him, but he could only exhale a long sigh of relief in response. The hole was behind him, hiding the angry man, at least for the moment. CJ yanked him toward the exit and glared down at him, shaking his head as he escorted him past the cowgirl's gold table where the girl in blue had just sat down. She tried to stay focused on her food, but in a brief moment, her eyes slid upward and connected with Grayson's. What the heck do you think you're doing, kid? CJ questioned. He smiled shyly at the girl in blue and then spoke plainly. Get in my hat. 
Oh boy, that's the end of chapter three. It's starting to get interesting, don't you think? I wonder what that uh, square jaw and uh, mantis guy are up to. I think we'll probably find out somewhere further in the book. So you stay tuned and you come back next week where we're going to read chapter three and four. And uh, keep a lookout on our, on our calendar because later this month we're going to have a barbecue and a get together with the bounce house and some other fun things and some games. So you'll not want to miss that if you're in our area. Just keep an eye out and we'll talk more about it next week. All right, guys, you have a good day. Bye-bye.